In this video, you'll learn how PHP frameworks such as Laravel and Symfony deal with HTTP requests and responses. Once we've done that, we'll add request and response handling code to the framework we're building. When you enter a URL into a browser, submit a form, or use an API client, this sends a request to the web server. Upon receiving the request, the server processes it and sends back a response. The request and response are referred to as HTTP messages. Part of the request is the URL, which includes the query string. The request also includes the HTTP method used. When you type in a URL or click on a link, the request is get. The post method is typically used when submitting a form, and there are other HTTP methods that are used when dealing with APIs. The request also includes headers. These contain metadata about the request, such as the host name, information about the client being used, optional authentication details, and so on. Finally, there's the body of the request, which is optional. This contains any data that is being sent to the server, such as the data from a form. The response also contains a body, which is typically HTML, JSON, or even an image. As with the request, this is optional. In addition to the body, the response contains some headers, which, just like the request, contain metadata about the response. Finally, the response also contains a status code, which is a three-digit number that tells the client the result of the request. For example, 200 means OK, 404 means not found, and so on. In a web browser, you can see the request URL and the response body. However, if we open the web developer tools and go to the network tab, you can see the full details for the request and response. For the request, there's the HTTP method that was used, in this case get. There's the URL, and there are the request headers. For this request, the request body was empty. As for the response, the status code is shown here, with the headers below. The body did contain some data, and you can see it here. Let's look at how the code we have so far processes the request and returns a response. So far in this series, we've created a front controller, and we've placed this in the public folder. This is loading a bootstrap script, which is outside of the web root. The code in here is deciding which content to show based on the URL part of the request, specifically a value in the query string. We're getting this query string value using the get array. As for the response, we're writing directly to the body of the response using the echo statement. The get array is a PHP superglobal with which there are a few potential problems. Some superglobals only exist when PHP is responding to a web request, for example in a browser as we're doing. If you run the same code on the command line, in a unit test or as part of an API, you can't rely on them. In addition, these are global values that can be read or overwritten from anywhere in the code. This means you can't be sure that the values haven't been changed somewhere else. However, there is a standard solution to this problem. In PHP, there's a standard called PSR7 that defines how HTTP messages should be handled. It basically gives us a standardized way to represent requests and responses as objects, instead of relying on superglobals. Instead of writing some code that implements PSR7 ourselves, let's use an existing package. So in the PHP package repository, let's search for PSR7. The number of downloads on these packages shows how popular some of these packages are, which is another reason why there's no point in creating another implementation ourselves. One of the most popular is the Guzzle implementation, which is the one I'll use in this example. We can install this package using this composer command. So, on the command line, from the root of the project, let's install the guzzle psr7 package. 
This has created the composer.json and composer.lock files, along with the vendor folder where the package itself is installed. Source code control is beyond the scope of this video, but if you are using something like Git, you would typically exclude the vendor folder from the repository. For example, let's create a .git ignore file in the project root and specify the vendor folder in there. Now let's see how we use this package. First, we need to load the files where the package classes are defined. As we used Composer to install it, if we require Composer's autoloader, then the class files will be loaded automatically. Then we need to create a request object. We can do this with the static from globals method on the server request class. In order to use this class like this without its namespace, we need to import it with a use statement. Note that your editor might add this use statement automatically. For example, if you're using the PHP IntelliFence plugin in Visual Studio Code. Note that this from globals method isn't part of the PSR7 standard, rather it's a convenience method specific to this package. Basically, it creates a request object that contains the values from all these superglobals. Now we have the request object, we can use it to get the value from the query string. So instead of the get superglobal, we call the get query params method on the request object. This returns an array that contains the same values as the get superglobal. So we can get the element with the page index in the same way. Let's try that, and it still works as before. Now, however, we are no longer using the PHP superglobal to get the query string value. As for the response, we're currently just requiring scripts that output content directly using echo, for example here in the homepage script. Instead of doing this, let's use a response object. So we can use the response class like this, we need to import it into the current namespace with a use statement. To set the body of the response, this particular implementation of PSR7 lets you do this by passing an argument to the constructor like this. However, this is not part of the PSR7 standard and is specific to this package, so I won't use that here. We'll see later on how easy it is to switch packages that way. To set the body of the response using PSR7 methods, first we need to create a stream object. A stream is another part of PSR7 that can be thought of as a wrapper around data such as a string or a file. To create a stream, let's use the stream for method on the utils class passing in a string. For now, let's just pass a simple string to this to check that it's working. And of course, we need to import the utils class into the current namespace with a use statement. Then we can set the body of the response to this stream, which we can do with the withBody method. Then let's just check that this is working by getting the body with the getBody method and using echo to output it directly. Let's try that in the browser and we get the hello world message we just added printed out after the other content. So now, instead of this literal string, we need to set the body to the content of the files we're including with the require line. Inside these files, we're not returning anything, rather just using echo to output some content. So to get this in a string, we can use the output buffer. If we call the obstart function before we require the file, then after that line we can call the obgetclean function, and this will return that content into a variable as a string. Then we can set the contents of the stream object to this variable instead of the literal string. Let's try that, and now it works. If I change the page, that works too. When creating the response, we can also set the status code with the withStatus method and add headers with the withHeader method. 
To output these along with the response body, we could use the HTTP response code function along with the get status code method of the response object to set the response's status code. In a similar way for the response headers, we could use the get headers function to get an array of all the headers. Then output each one inside a loop using the header function. However, instead of writing the code to do this, we can use a PSR7 emitter. If we search the PHP package repository for PSR7 emitter, there are several options. Let's go with the HTTPsoft HTTP emitter package. Let's install this using Composer on the command line. Back in the code, instead of outputting all of the response parts separately, let's create an object of the package's SAPI emitter class and call the emit method on it, passing in the response object. As the response object implements the PSR7 standard, the emitter package knows how to get the status code, headers and body from that object. It can then output them using echo, the HTTP status code and header functions. Let's not forget that to use this class without its namespace like this, we need a use statement to import it. Let's try that, and this still works. If I use the developer tools to view the details of the response, we can see the status code and header that we specified in the code. So, now that we're using request and response objects, we're no longer using global variables to access the request, or outputting the response directly using echo from this file. This makes the code more robust. Also, complying with the PSR7 standard makes it easier to work with other components that also comply with this standard, such as routers, middleware and so on. We'll see how these work in later videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.